for a chemical change at a fixed temperature delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S you have come through this formula in my video on spontaneity and Gibbs free energy what I did not tell you is that delta G is the free energy change in a chemical reaction is actually the available energy with which you can do some useful work and T delta S is the energy used in changing the entropy of the reactants this energy cannot be used so when we subtract this energy from the energy of reaction that is delta H we get the free energy now this change in free energy may be positive this means that external energy has to be supplied to carry out the reaction or in other words the reaction cannot happen on its own therefore positive free energy change means non-spontaneous reactions on the other hand if the change in free energy is negative that means energy is released and the reaction can happen on its own because no external energy is required therefore negative free energy change means spontaneous reaction to explain this I will take up some specific reactions let us take combustion of carbon here are the thermodynamic parameters of this equation see here delta H is negative which indicates that it is an exothermic reaction delta S is positive which indicates that the products have more randomness than the reactants this is true because CO2 is a triatomic molecule and has more degrees of freedom in this case delta G is negative at all possible temperatures if this reaction is carried out in a closed vessel then the reaction will get completed now let us take the synthesis of ammonia by Haber's process here delta H is negative therefore it is an exothermic reaction and if carried out in a closed vessel the temperature increases as the temperature increase this part become more and more positive until a temperature is reached when the free energy change become no longer negative at this stage it is said to be that chemical equilibrium has reached at this point the partial pressure of the products and the reactants remain constant and the reaction seems to have stopped but the reaction does not actually stop what happens is that both the forward and backward reaction takes place at the same speed as soon as one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to form two molecules of ammonia at the same time two molecules of ammonia gets dissociated this is therefore called dynamic equilibrium now consider this reaction dinitrogen tetroxide is colorless whereas nitrogen dioxide is of brown color this reaction is endothermic and this is the entropy change for the reaction now delta G for this reaction is 4.8 kilojoules per mole this is almost equal to zero therefore the reaction reaches equilibrium at about room temperature that is why NO2 gas collected in a test tube at room temperature it is light brown in color as equilibrium mixture contain both dinitrogen tetroxide which is a colorless gas and NO2 which is reddish brown in color when this test tube is dipped in ice cold water the temperature falls and the delta G of the forward reaction becomes positive while the delta G of the backward reaction becomes negative so more N2O4 is formed and the gas in the test tube become colorless take another test tube containing NO2 gas at room temperature and dip it in boiling water the temperature will increase and the delta G of the forward reaction become negative and more NO2 is produced the color of the gas in the test tube become more brownish in color when both the test tubes are taken out and after a while when both the test tube reaches room temperature their color become light brown again this proves that chemical equilibrium may be achieved from either side while saying all this you must remember one important thing the change in free energy only tell us whether the reaction will proceed spontaneously or not it does not tell anything about reaction kinetics the following change from diamond to graphite is spontaneous because delta G for this change is negative but everyone know that 
this does not happen in reality. This is because the reaction kinetics is very slow and the change cannot be visualized even if we keep a piece of diamond on the table and wait for centuries. However, the spontaneity of this reaction is not false, which can be realized from the fact that earth has more graphite than diamond in its crust. So when we come to reaction kinetics, we have to study the law of mass action. The law tells us that the reaction rate is proportional to the active mass or activity of the reactants raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. Activity for reactants in liquid phase is nothing but concentration times activity coefficient. In dilute solutions, this activity coefficient is equal to 1 and so concentration can be used instead of activity. For gases, this activity or active mass is synonymous to fugacity. For ideal gases, the partial pressure is equal to fugacity. The pressure and fugacity are related to each other like this, where this is the fugacity coefficient. Now let us consider a gaseous reaction like this. This is the forward reaction rate and this is the rate constant of the forward reaction. This is the backward reaction rate and this is the rate constant for backward reaction. At equilibrium, both these rates become equal. Remember that pure solids and liquids are not taken in the equation. This is the equilibrium constant when we take the activities as the partial pressures. When the concentrations are taken, the equilibrium constant is Kc. Note that concentration is written within square brackets only. Moreover, you can get a relation between Kp and Kc from your textbook. I am not going into the derivation part of this relation. What is more important is to find a relation between the chemical equilibrium constant and the free energy change at standard condition, where standard conditions means one atmosphere or one bar pressure, one molar concentration and 298 Kelvin temperature. What we know is that delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S, where delta H is equal to this. Substituting, we get delta G equal to this. Now, from the first law, we know that delta U, the internal energy change, is equal to Q minus P delta V. Now, when the process is reversible, then Q equal to T delta S. This gives delta U equal to T delta S minus P delta V. Substituting the value of delta U in this equation, we get delta G equal to V delta P. Now, since the reaction is reversible and proceeds through small steps, we can integrate this equation like this. This superscript means standard state. Now for an ideal gas, V equal to nRT by P. Or if we talk about molar volume, then V equal to RT by P. Integrating we get G equal to G standard plus RT ln P. Now we consider a gas phase homogeneous reaction like this we get the free energy change of formation of each of the reactants and products from this equation. And from this, we calculate the change in free energy of the reaction. This means delta G is equal to delta G standard plus RT ln Q, where Q is the reaction quotient. At equilibrium, delta G equal to zero and Q equal to Kp, the equilibrium constant. This implies delta G standard equals to minus RT ln Kp. When Kp is greater than 1, then delta G standard is negative and we find more products in the equilibrium mixture. If Kp is less than 1, then delta G standard is positive and we find more reactants in the equilibrium mixture. When Kp is equal to 1, then delta G equals to 0 and the concentration of the products and reactants in the equilibrium mixture is more or less the same. 